Welcome to 2023's June Speakeasy Salon, brought to you by American Insight. American Insight's mission is to promote the history and values of free speech, human rights, and the rule of law by discussing how these values emerge in contemporary societies around the world through the lens of independent filmmakers. My name is Fei Yuan, and I'm a New York-based film producer, editor, and curator. A documentary I worked on called Jazz in China won American Insight's 2022 Free Speech Award, and I'm thrilled to be here today to moderate this month's Speakeasy. Our special guest this month is Wu Jing Chang, whose short animated documentary, My Grandmother is an Egg, was a 2022 official selection winner. Wu Cheng is an award-winning animation director and has been working for the past eight years on various commercial and independent projects in the fields of animation, illustration, and game concept art. She is passionate about using animation filmmaking, particularly documentary and experimental animated filmmaking, to bring important topics to light. She earned her master's degree in animation from the Royal College of Art in the United Kingdom. Wu Cheng, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Fei. Hi, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm Wu Ching Chang, the animation director and the founder of Echo Creative. And Wu Ching, tell us about how you got started in animation filmmaking. What was your path? Well, I start from uh, I start making film while I was in the uni university. The uh, Taipei University of the Arts in Taiwan. Well, I was uh, when I was a student, I uh, was very uh, inspired by lots of experimental animation around the world. I like animation and moving images, and um, my David uh, animation film is Mother, which is the graduation film when I was in the university, and then. Um, when I was a child, I loved drawing, and um, I was ref I was inspired by the Japanese manga very much, and um, uh, I loved drawing and uh, study art, and um, now I'm make animation and illustration and concept art, and also uh, both commercial and independent work. Hmm. And tell us about how you first encountered your grandmother's story, which inspired this piece, My, uh, My Grandmother is an Egg. Well, well, it's actually, um, this film is inspired by my grandmother's experience as a Tongyangxi. When I was a child, I remember my family, my mother and my aunts always told me um, when they were child, the family selling eggs. Every children have to help my grandmother mm -hmm. to peel eggs and um, cook eggs every mm -hmm. day. It's hard work. It's a. Um, it's like um, for me. It's like a. There is a strong relationship or a connection between my grandmother's life and egg. So, I start to think if I can make a film for her. Mm. And um, to talk about her experience, yeah, that would be a very meaningful uh, story and film for her and for me and for all the audience, especially women. So I start to think uh, to make a story, to tell the story of Taiwanese woman and uh, uh, which is based on a true story. So that's the beginning of this film. Yeah, very interesting. I'm curious about the process of excavating your family's history, um, specifically like archives related to um, your grandmother and also your mother, which we also see in the film. Um, what was that research and development process like for you? It's a story about my grandmother. So. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to interview my grandmother herself. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, she had Alzheimer at the moment, so I was not able to interview her. So instead, I interview my aunt and my uncles who uh, are 
the the son and daughter of my grandmother to、mm. talk about her life.、Mm. And、uh, during the time、uh, during the interview, I talk about、um, her life and her business and uh, and uh, her education, her relationship between、uh, she and、um, and and her son and daughter.、Mm. And I got the、uh, eight hours. Interview record because my grandmother has ten children. That's a lot, yeah. But um, uh, the story is based on those interview.、Mm. I re re edit.、Uh, I edit the all the interview voice to build the narration to arrange them、uh, into several topics and issues. Including her education, including the household,、um, the ho- the house calls she made, and、um, including the selling egg process, and that's the films comes out. And besides, I、uh, I did some research and.、Uh, The got the the household trans、uh, the the transcription of the household registration during、mm. the time of Taiwan under Japanese rule.、Mm. That well, let's say let's say is a historical archives in Taiwan, and、um, I found out that in this in the document, my grandmother's name is in the form, and there is a. Identification for her, and、uh, I know I noticed that I noticed that、um, it shows Tong Si Fu Zai, which would mean a daughter in laws. But also, I I I feel like it's like identification for her, which、uh, limit her life. So I、uh, also use. Contain these archives in this film. You can see、uh, there's a little girl, well, who is my grandmother in this film as the main character. When she be put in the egg shell and there's a big hand open the egg shell, she fall down, and then、uh, she uh there's a big hand uh pointing at her, and then.、Uh, Pointing also pointing at the transcription、um, uh, of the、okay. household registration. Yeah, yeah, they are just like they are saying, "You are woman. You are the Tong Yang Si.、Mm-hmm. You you have to do that, 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 and that, just like that." So that's the uh, that's how I use those history arch、uh, historical archives in this film, and also. I contain some old photo in the family in this film. There are two photos in the film, and I put the photos on the multiplan, which is the equipment of making animation. And also, I、uh, use the acrylic pigment to paint on the copy of the old photos、um, to have them cover on the environment and the. Family members, except for my grandmother. What I want to say is,、um, the white pigment is just like the patriarchal shadow around her. It's a story about woman and the world、mm-hmm. behind her. Yeah, very interesting. I was wondering where that document came from. So it sounds like you were able to pull that primary. Um, source from the historical archives and photocopied it, and then animated that right for the film. Exactly, I photocopied them, and、um, to have the copy in the computer mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. edit them in the film. Very interesting, and、um, like you said, the short film is based on your grandmother's experience as a Tongyang Si, which is the traditional practice of. Selling or giving a young girl away to another family to be raised as a future daughter-in-law, hence her designation in the family papers as daughter-in-law.、Um, and you said in an interview that even though this practice vanished decades ago, 
its patriarchal shadow still lingers. Um, we talked a little bit about that in um, the craftsmanship of the, the white pigment, but can you talk more about like what that means for women in Taiwan today? Yeah, just like you said, the tradition of Tongyangxi has been vanished for several decades. But I think the patriarchal shadow still lingers, not only in Taiwan, but also in Asia, in many countries around the world. We can still sometimes hear some case of sexual harassment in workplace, in schools, in many places. So I think we still, I think it's still a long way to go. And I hope the audience can glimpse the long past through this film and they can imagine women's situation in our own times and look forward to strive for a real gender equality in the future. Totally. I mean, I, I think that um, speaking my, from my family's experience yeah. also, you can definitely feel um, the shadow lingering just in, in the interpersonal dynamics of a family, right? How women um, are treated, how men are treated, how what what women think of other women. Also, just the social expectations, um, there's such a discrepancy between the two. Um, and actually, I was doing research for a different film about um, Korean citizenship laws in the 1980s. I don't know if, if this, something similar existed in um, Taiwan that you're aware of, but um, just to give a very quick example of patriarchal shadows still lingering in uh, modern society. But in the 1980s, we learned that um, if a, if you are born to a single mom in Korea, you are not given citizenship, even though you are born in Korea to a single mom, because um, the bloodline cannot be confirmed. So the bloodline has to come from the father it's called like the right to blood or something in order for you to be given an official Korean citizenship. So a lot of single moms in the 80s ended up giving up their um, kids for adoption um, out of actually love for them. Because if you, are, if you are abandoned as a baby and you were found on Korean territory, then you are given Korean citizenship. Whereas like if you're born to a single Korean mom, you will not be, you know? So it's like a really weird way of thinking, I think about birthright and citizenship and um, bloodline even. Um, and it's, and it's for me, it's like the most um, obvious or profound example of how patriarchy still lingers. That the fact that it's the father's blood that matters more than the mother, even though the child comes from the mother's womb. Um, and this law did change, but um, unfortunately not for a long time. So that's one example that I can think of. In other ways, it's so subtle. I think that um, that's why I loved your film, because there's so many nuances in it that I think speak to the direct experience of what it's like for women to live um, underneath the shadow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then going back to talking about just the animation a little bit, you touched on this um, a little earlier, but I just, I think it's so beautifully and thoughtfully animated, the film. So congratulations. Um, I'm, I'm wondering how would you characterize the style of your animation? Um, like from where do you draw inspiration? You mentioned a little bit about um, growing up, just loving drawing in Japanese manga and all of that. But, you know, for this film in particular, or were there any specific animation director's work that inspired you or styles that influenced you in the making of the film? Yeah, well, in this film, uh, as you can see, the main animation is 2D computer animation. It's like a oil paint texture or a hand paint texture uh, for the visual art style, but uh, it's all made by computer actually. And I really like the texture of oil paint and texture mm -hmm. of uh, hand handmade things. So uh, I try to do something like that. Mm. And um, yeah, and besides, I make the animation, the stop motion animation with eggs, egg white and egg yolk. Oh, it wow. was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, um, the beginning of that idea is my grandmother had sold yeah. egg for like 10 years in her life. And um, I directly thinking, okay, and I can buy some eggs and put them on the multi-plan camera. And uh, I can, I can put, I can I can move the those eggs to make the stop motion to make the, those egg comes alive. That's the very beginning idea. And I started to and I, I bought egg and put them on the multiplane. And accidentally I one egg was broken. And the the egg and like egg white and egg yolk, I I look at them and Find out that I can use my finger to make animation to with those uh, egg white and egg yolk, and I start to make some wave like animation, and those footage eventually becomes the most important part of this mm -hmm. film, which mm -hmm. is the the pic of the old mountain sea mm -hmm. in in the end of the film. And um, uh, egg itself is my grandmother, and also egg is the woman in this film. It has a multiple metaphor of the of of, of uh, in this film, and also I would say the white pigment means the regulation, means the operation, means mm. the. Uh, patriarchal shadow mm. and uh, the wave the sea and water means hope and um, they are also means um, moving forward mm. in this film yeah I love that this is all um, a happy accident sort of and I, I love those moments in the creative process when you stumble upon something unexpectedly um, in your case, it was the egg, which is the perfect metaphor, like you said, but also it became um, a vehicle through which you were able to express or this story found its fullest expression. Um, so I feel like it's it's really egg themed <laughs> all the way, like in front of the camera and also behind the camera. Um, what did you learn from making this film? It's so personal and um, it's so thoughtful and you really crafted every detail of it. I'm, I'm curious what there were any lessons that you learned from making this? Well, making this film uh, means a lot for me personally, because I finally uh, make the, a film for uh, my grandmother, for women in Taiwan. And that is a goal uh, for me in, the, in recent years, like five years. Um, and um, what I learned in this film is, I will say this film brings out lots of um, lots of experience for me and mm -hmm. lots of opportunity for me, because uh, this this film has been um, has won the special jury mention award at Atlanta Film Festival and Women Make Wave Film Festival in Taiwan and in the United States. And um, also it has been selected in lots of film festivals around the world, include um, the Animation Film Festival of Florida, and also include Encounters Film Festival in the UK. Right. And yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, and also the Hot Dogs Canadian Film Festival in Canada. and. Uh, during the time I have attended lots of QA session and events in this in those film festivals, and it gave me a lot of inspiration and feedbacks, and mm. yeah, I learned a lot from this process, and also I made a lot of professionals and uh, filmmakers, which are uh, who are very uh, meaningful and uh, and helpful in my career. So I will say, uh, yeah, this film gives a lot of opportunities and listen from me. 
And actually on the topic of traveling with the film and um, looking, go, attending all these different festivals and just watching the film, watching the audience watch your film for the first time in many of these cases, how was it, I'm just curious, how was it received by audiences around the world? Did anyone come up to you after the film and say something that really touched you or something that you'll always remember? Yes, I remember uh, when the film was screened in a film festival, I received an email from the audience in Mexico. Mm. And uh, he told me, I, he, he, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, like, did he wow. find out my email? Yeah. yeah, but it's very interesting. And uh, um, it's, it's uh, unforgettable for, for me because um, he told me it's very, the film is very touching. And um, he wants to thank me to making this film. Yeah. And uh, I feel like um, I'm doing the right things. And uh, mm. in Taiwan, I can meet, I meet a lot of audience um, when, I, when I'm doing the QA and uh, in, in the festival. And um, some audience told me they have the, her, her or his grandmother as a Tongyangsi as well. Right. Yeah, right. It, that is a uh, that is very common in the past time. I would say it. so. Uh, for them, it's like a watching a film about their grandmother, and uh, it will have some reflection to their life as well. So it's another feedbacks I have I have got from the audience. Yeah, and those are always very rewarding to know that. Um, these experiences resonate across boundaries, really, not just in Taiwan, but around the world. And I, you know, I read that you're in the early stages of developing your next project. Can you talk to us more about that project? Like, well, what are you working on now? Yeah, I'm uh, still preparing for my next film. It's on the very early stage production mm. stage, but um, I will say um, I'm still doing some research and uh, and uh, to talk to a lot of people to get some inspiration. Um, it's not very clear of uh, the topics or the issue I will talk, but. Um, uh, I will like I will let everyone know when it is complete, and um, just stay tuned. Yeah, we would love to just follow you and you know follow your work and what you've been up to. So if there's a newsletter that we can sign up for, please let us know, and we would love to give a shout out. And um, my last question before I get there, I would just like to say that if there's Anyone in the audience that has a question for Wu Chang, please feel free to um, drop her a question in the Q&A panel. And I will pull up these questions after I finish with my last question. So Wu Chang, my last question actually talks about um, the future of the creative industry. And I feel like you're very much at the forefront of it, working in both commercial, in the commercial world and also on the independent side, doing animation and also experimental um, animated filmmaking. So how do you envision the future of our creative industry? Which developments are you most excited about? And conversely, what are you most cautious about? I think what I envision for the creative industry is the greater influence of the AI technology. Um, mm. I think uh, some company and some uh, filmmakers are uh, integration the AI into their pop line of production. And then um, it's they do have uh it does have lots of influence and uh, potential for the creative industry make a uh, filmmaker and uh, the designer artists, everyone. So I think 
the influence cannot be ignored by anyone. And uh, it's still going on. The technology advance never stop and um, uh, it renew every every week, every day, or even every hours. So um, we're still looking forward to um, to to see how can we do for how can we do with that. And um, yeah, it's still very new, and um, we 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 still have to uh, learn about it and um, to see if we can do anything. Yeah, and for your own work, I'm curious, have you, um, are you using software at the, at the moment that has its own um, built-in AI integration, whether it's in the edit or in the sorting, in the research process? Um, yeah, I'm curious if you have like a personal example that you can provide about how AI has influenced your own pipeline or your own work. At the moment, um, I do, I'm working, when I'm working on emails and uh, documents, I actually mm -hmm. use lots of chat GPT. Yeah. Okay. And it's very helpful, actually. Um, when I'm, when I have some, have a draft and, um, it could help to, um, build, uh, build a, a formal email or commercial email in different, um, in different language. And mm -hmm. also, uh, I think there's uh, there are lots of uh, AI technology and AI software, uh, but uh, at, uh, recently I think Adobe Photoshop um, it contains uh, AI technology, and um, there's a there's a, a function who, what we can do is to have a image or of photos and then um, and we can use this function to to build the rest of the photos to have those photos extend and um, that could be another helpful function that creative industry uh, author artists and designer can use so it sounds like you um, have a mostly favorable attitude towards the arrival of AI and integrating AI technologies into the production pipeline. Well, I think uh, for me, the uh, AI technology could be a helpful thing in the very early stage of the production pipeline, like the concept art stage, and uh, or the brainstorming stage, or even mm. making the mood board, and um, to create my side project, and also I I know like some people, some artists use the use them to pitch, because uh, when a film is in the very production stage, uh, especially during pitching stage. Uh, it could be great if uh, we visualize, if the artists can visualize their imagination right. to an uh, image, yeah. Right, right, right. So in the early stages, when you're still conceptualizing the ideas and sort of need to do like a brain dump of all the ideas in one place, AI can be a helpful aggregator for all those exactly. ideas. It's very interesting. Question from the audience. So since this, you did, um, you were the winner of this, this free speech award, what does free speech mean to you? Well, I think speech means is a uh, basic human rights for everyone around the world. And um, yeah, so I, I really appreciate that speech film festival uh, giving an opportunity to um, to have the film in the festival, and I can uh, tell the audience this story in Taiwan, which happened um, as like uh, seventy eight years ago. Um, also, I can introduce this tradition to all the audience. 
who care about the speech free, the free speech. Yes. And on that note, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you, Wu Ching, for joining us. Um, please save the date, Wednesday, November 15th, for this year's Free Speech Award Ceremony, which will be held at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. We will be in touch with you very soon about our upcoming speakeasies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone.